what the fuck is up happy monday everyone um if you came here tonight looking for any sort of drama you are in the wrong place and uh yeah i am going live from my regular adulting with donnie podcast page on uh on facebook and uh yeah tonight i don't care because you know there's nothing to there's really nothing in my notes that's gonna you know ruffle any feathers per se uh what's everyone happy monday firstly uh it's it's just after nine o'clock on monday night as i record this uh coming off of yet another awesome weekend um i don't even like uh, you know i have so much I, tonight is going to be mostly conspiracy related uh tonight's show it's going to be mostly conspiracy related but of course you know me well enough by now. You know I have to catch you up on whatever the fuck is going on in uh, in my life. You know, you, you know that I'm gonna have to, you know, talk about whatever I did this weekend. Uh, you know, mostly whatever Ro and I did this weekend. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to talk about that, and I will, of course. Um, but uh, but yeah, mostly conspiracy tonight because I asked the question. I asked the question in three very simple places last night. I asked the question, "What are your favorite conspiracies?" I asked. Uh, I asked on my personal Facebook page. I asked on the Adulting with Donnie Facebook page, and um, and I asked in a uh, in a podcasting group, and that group, of course, has sixteen thousand members in it. So. You know, I got I got plenty of responses there, but uh, just uh, yeah, I mean that's what this this episode is going to be mostly about is conspiracies. Um, I guess I'll start with my weekend. Uh, Friday night was just a hangout night for me and Ro. Just hung out in inside. It was cool. I don't mind that shit. I I like that. I actually really enjoy to just sometimes just chill out at home. In fact. I would say more often than not, I would rather just hang out at home. I don't know about you guys, like going out seems like a great idea when you say you're going to do it, but uh, there has not been a single time in my life where I've made plans to go out somewhere and then that moment comes and I'm, I'm an hour or two away from like, you know, like it's like six o'clock on Saturday night. And all I can think is like, oh, I don't want to fucking do that. I don't want to go out. I, I got to fucking, you know, take a shower and go to this, you know, I got to go and be at this place that I don't actually want to be. And, and, you know, I mean, it always ends up a great time anyways. Like one of, one of me, one of like my favorite, I don't, I can't speak for her, but one of my favorite memories of, of Ro and I was last August, um, she had like her birthday party kind of sort of because COVID, um, it was like her family. It was the day that I met her fucking family. So like, like I really got thrown into the fire. I meet her sister, her mother, her father, uh, her brother-in-law and her nephew all in one shot. Just, I meet everyone all at once and it was in her backyard. So at least it was somewhat familiar and I had just gotten my cat. So at least I had a reason once in a while to be like, Hey, I'm, I'm just going to go check on the cat. You know, at least I had a reason once in a while to like excuse myself from the party. But, um, but it was like kind of a, you know, hectic ish day. And then, uh, and then the party ends and I was supposed to record this show on a Saturday night. Cause the, you know, for those of you that don't know, the show used to be recorded all the time on Friday or Saturday night. Uh, you know, because in a previous life I pretty much had Friday and Saturday nights alone. Um, and, and then of course Monday was dedicated to gun shop guys. And so, I mean, you know, it was just kind of, uh. You know, Friday and Saturday nights. That's when I recorded the show. So, um, so this party ends like everyone kind of parts ways around like four or five, maybe six o'clock that night. And uh, and Roe had bought me this this desk, actually the desk that I'm recording. You know, that my computer sits on right now. Um, she had bought me this desk, but it needed to be put together. So, uh, so I'm upstairs in this second bedroom of hers putting this desk together with my cat who, you know, recently rescued from crazy pants. And, um, and, uh, and I sent her a text and I was like, Hey, do you want to go? I said, cause we always, we do this thing, which is, I, I like a lot. 
we do this thing and it, it's uh you know if we're going to ask a question we don't actually ask the question we just send a text saying question dot 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 so question dot 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 right and uh and we always have the option to answer the question or pass um which i've never passed on a question uh she attempted to pass on a question once and i said well i'm going to ask anyways uh, and you can decide if you want to answer or not and really it's how we ended up in this relationship that that one you know that one instance of me being like fine i'm, I'm going to ask no matter what um so uh so anyways so i send her a, a, you know i send her a question dot 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 and uh she says yes and i said uh, do you want to go get a drink and uh and she was like oh you know she was so psyched about it and you know and i didn't really know where we were going to go i kind of just thought like uh somewhere downtown portsmouth we we'd go to one of the bars down there and and that didn't end up being the case we ended up um but hold on let me get there uh so that's kind of just what i thought was like we just go to one of the bars downtown just the two of us sit at one of the fucking bars not one of the like dance clubby bars but like i was thinking like almost like a i was in my head i was thinking like a restaurant like there's so many fucking restaurants in portsmouth um i was just thinking one of those places like portsmouth brewery that's a good you know example um i was thinking just like one of those places like yeah we'll go get a couple drinks and you know come back and if there's still time then maybe i'll do my show then but i just wasn't feeling it like i wasn't feeling it in the sense like i didn't want to do my podcast of course i always want to do my podcast it was more in the sense of like like we just had this great day i just met your family it's only seven o'clock right now and and i don't want to be away from you so <laughs> So, you know, I'd rather go get a drink right now and uh, and I'll do my podcast later or if later is not an option, then I'll do my podcast tomorrow or whatever. And I don't remember what day if I I, I re- ended up recording that week. But, um, but yeah, anyway, so um, fuck, I don't even remember where I was going. Um, shit, I know that I was going somewhere with that. It uh, doesn't matter, though. Oh, we were talking about oh oh going out. That's what I was talking about was going out. Um, so the other, so like early last week, probably like Tuesday or Wednesday, Ro says, uh, Hey, my neighbor hosts karaoke at this bar in Portsmouth. And, uh, and you know, he, I think he messaged her and said like, Hey, I'm doing karaoke if you guys want to come. So then she posted on her Facebook page and said, Hey, open invite, you know, anyone that wants to come because we were going to go. So it was just the two of us that were going to go. And then she posts saying, Hey, you know, here's an open invite. Anyone that's interested, you know, you're welcome to join us. And, uh, what is it about karaoke? Like, I always think like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to fucking embarrass myself. But for some reason I am like, it's a magnet to me. I just, you know, I, I get there and especially if I get a couple drinks in me, then I'm like, I can fucking belt out this song. No problem. Um, so we went and, uh, and, uh, I had a feeling, a pretty good feeling that she was going to do at least a couple songs, uh, which she did. And, uh, it ended up being an awesome fucking time, which it always is. Like if it, if it's her and I involved, I don't give a fuck about your, you know, Oh, Rodo love fest. I don't give, I don't give a fuck about your opinion on that. Okay. I'm sorry that, you know, you, 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 you know, hate to see two people incredibly happy. I'm sorry for you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we, uh, so, you know, we always seem to have a great time wherever we go. Like that night that I'm talking about a year ago, we went to this, what I always considered a dive bar. Um, I've always considered it a dive bar. I've delivered mail there a bunch of times and, uh, and I've always just considered it complete trash. And she was like, let's go to this place. And I was like, why, why are we going there? But, you know, still fairly new into the relationship. I was like, okay, let's go. Uh, and it ended up being an amazing fucking time. It was a Saturday night and they did karaoke, which is like, I don't know. I thought karaoke was reserved for like Tuesday nights at Applebee's. Um, but, uh, it ended up being an awesome time. We played pool and she was dressed so good as she always is. Um, and, and, uh, I know I talked about this a year ago and I don't care. Um, cause it's my show. I'll do what I want to. Um, but she was dressed amazing and she looked amazing. And, and then she's there with me who doesn't look amazing and probably was not dressed amazing. Um, and she, uh, but there was these fucking Navy tools 
Because if you don't know, Portsmouth is right next to a Navy shipyard um, where, you know, the submarine seamen come in and, uh, and, and hang out for a couple weeks because they got nothing better to do. Uh, so, so these guys come in and then they, you know, they, they want to, they want to go in and check out the local crowd. And, uh, and I've got these three military tattoos on my, on my right arm. I've got three military tattoos that from, from, you know, three various units that I was deployed with. And, uh, and then I think that night I was also wearing a military t-shirt. Like I, I think I was wearing a t-shirt that I bought in Iraq that was like specific to the base that I was on. And, uh, and, uh, this guy comes up and he's, and it was like, it was like a stolen valor type of thing. Like almost like he was trying to call me out for stolen valor. Like he was asking me questions that were like, you wouldn't ask these questions unless you thought that someone was stealing valor, which was upsetting to say the least to me, but, uh, whatever. Fuck this guy. He's a tool. Um, so, uh, so, he, so, uh, so yeah, we, you know, that was that night. We had a great time that night. Um, and then this Saturday night we went and fucking go to karaoke. And again, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to do anything. And of course I did. Of course, spoiler alert, uh, by the end of the night I did, um, what was it? Uh, bartender by rehab. And I'll tell you why. Uh, and it was a mistake. It was a colossal mistake. But here's what happened. Um, I had invited my friend Dalton, guy that I work with, fan of the show, the last I knew. We'll see if he still listens to the show. Because if he still listens, then he'll, you know, come up and be like, hey, I heard the show. Thanks for calling me out, whatever. Um, but so Dalton, uh, so so Ro invites a bunch of her friends, a bunch of our friends too. Um, she invites uh, her mother, which is cool. And Ro told me all week, like, my mother used to sing in a band, and she's a really good singer, and she's a really good singer. Like, she did a, I don't know, two or three, maybe even four songs that night, um, and she is a really good singer. And then uh, our friend Kimmy came out, and, uh, and and our friend Jason and Tanya came out, uh, but my friend Dalton, I had texted him, like, on Friday, I think, maybe, yeah, I think I texted him on Friday, and I was like, hey, man, because he kind of like alludes to wanting to hang out with me outside of work sometimes. I don't care if I'm putting words in your mouth, Dalton. That's what I'm going to say. He kind of alludes once in a while to wanting to hang out with me outside of work. And uh, so I thought this was a good opportunity. You know, it's karaoke. As far as I know, he's single, ladies. He's, he's ladies. He's a single guy. Um, and, uh, you know, we were, you know, we were both in the military and. All this shit, right? So, so, uh, so I texted him on Friday and I was like, Hey man, uh, karaoke tomorrow night, Patty's in Portsmouth, you know, if you want to come out and check it out. Um, and he says, uh, he, he replies back and he's like, he's like, Oh, I, I drive for Uber on, uh, on, on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, and, uh, he's like, Oh, I drive for, I drive for Uber on Friday and Saturday nights. I'm like, I'm like, okay, that's that's dumb. Like, you can take a fucking night off. It's Uber. They're not going to fire you for taking a night off. Like, literally, they couldn't fire you. I mean, I guess they could probably say that, like, you're not allowed to drive for us anymore if you were doing weird shit in your car. Like, if you were an Uber driver who, like, every time you pick up a passenger, you have your dick in your hand, that's probably a pretty good reason for Uber to be like, yeah, we're not going to suggest you anymore. You can delete the app. Um, so he... Uh, so he says, oh, I drive for Uber on Friday and Saturday nights, whatever. Right? So, I, so I told Ro, like, yeah, he's not coming out tonight. You know, this is why. And uh, and then Ro and I go, and we pull into the parking lot. And as we pull into the parking lot, I'm like, oh, fuck, I forgot my fucking wallet. Luckily, Ro only lives like 10 minutes away. So so she gets out of the car. I tell her I forgot my wallet. And I was like, I just got to run back to your place and get my wallet real quick. So she said, okay, she's going to go inside and get a table and whatever. And, and, uh, and I take off and halfway back to her place, Dalton calls me and he's like, Hey, are you still doing the karaoke thing tonight? I said, yeah. And he says, Oh, you know, I said, uh, I said, why are you thinking about coming out? And he says, he says, uh, he says, yeah, I don't know. I might, he's very, you know, non, non, um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, he's not confirming. 
Um, I know the word that I'm looking for. I just can't fucking think of it. And someone in their car right now is screaming at the radio saying, uh, saying whatever word it is, noncommittal. That's the word. He's very noncommittal. So, um, so he, so he's very noncommittal about it. He's like, ah, I don't know. Maybe he's like, how long are you going to be there? I said, I don't know. It goes until 10, but it might go later if there's more people. So, you know, who knows? And he's like, oh, you know, you might see me there, whatever. Right. So I get my, I get my wallet. I go back. I go inside and hang out and uh, and l- like f- five minutes after I get back, Dalton walks in. So it was an awesome time. It was just it was just fun. I mean, they had pool tables, so Dalton wanted to school people on pool tables. I guess he beat Rochelle, but uh, it was the last ball. It was, they were down to the eight ball. Uh, he played against her friend, our our friend Kimmy. I I don't know how he did against Kimmy. Uh, I think that she lost. I don't know how how much she may have lost by. Um, but it was just a fun time overall. So yeah, that was my Saturday night. And then, you know, yesterday was, yesterday was Sunday and, uh, Roe was supposed to have softball and didn't cause it fucking poured rain all morning. Um, we both went to the field. Uh, we both went there, but, uh, kind of on the way there, we were both thinking like we, we weren't talking, but we were th- both thinking the same thing. Like, why are we doing this today? This is there's no way this is actually going to happen, and it didn't. Uh, of course, it didn't. It was fucking pouring rain. You don't play softball. Like I can see playing softball in like some drizzle, but uh, a pouring fucking rain. I mean, it was raining pretty goddamn good. But I guess they have certain rules. Like the game was supposed to start at eleven, and it was pouring rain then. And they got this official umpire there, and uh, and he was like, "We're gonna wait it out and see what happens." And then, like the official rules are that you have to wait 15 minutes, and then after the rain start, uh, after the rain stops, you have to wait 15 more minutes. And uh, game was supposed to start at 11, and and like at 11:30 or 11:40, the coach from the other team was like, "How do you guys feel about just rescheduling to next weekend?" Um, so no one forfeits, and there's no game. You know, they're just they're just rescheduling the game. So. That was good. Yeah. So that was essentially my weekend. I went, uh, you know, it's, it's nine 30 right now here in New Hampshire. And, uh, I am fresh off of coming to watch Roe play some softball in Gonic, which was cool. Um, I love going to her games. I love watching her play. I love watching her teammates play. Uh, so I, uh, her and I have a differing opinion on, on certain games, right? Because, I was telling her, like, of course, every time that I go and watch her, like, I want her to win. Um, But I have been to both sides of this coin. I want to watch her win, but, like, I don't want the blowout. Like, I don't want her to win 30 to 2. You know, I want to go and see the close game. Like, that is the exciting game to me. When it's, you know, like tonight's game ended 8 to 9. And, uh... And it wasn't like, you know, the, the only unfortunate part of that would have been if it was eight to nine and then they had like her team had last up and then they won, you know, 10 to nine. Like that would have been cool. Um, you know, and I was talking about it with some of the players afterwards about how like exciting that is for me as a as a as a guy in the stands just watching the game go on. But uh, but it, it, it you know. I think it's cool when it's like super close. It's exciting when it's a super close game. When you're like on the edge of your seat and you're like, yes, you know, it, you know, you're just watching every fucking ball fly out. You know, when when it's a blowout and you're winning, you know, you you win. Of course, that's great for the team, the winning team especially, and it's demoralizing for the losing team. But the uh, but the blowout like is just kind of like okay, you know. You guys are down by 20 runs, and now you need to figure that out in the next two innings. Like, it just doesn't, it's just not as fun. So, that's where I'm coming from. Shouts out to uh, PH. Uh, you know, I saw you get up to bat tonight. You have a super interesting stance when you get up to bat. Um, Mike and Annie and Kimmy and, uh, and and all those guys. All those guys from Rose Team and, and, and the opposing teams that know me too, which is just cool. It's just fun to to go to these games and like opposing teams also know me and are like, Hey Donnie, that type of shit. So it's fun. Um, and also shouts out to, uh, to Doug for, uh, 
coming out to karaoke on Saturday night. He was kind of a last minute thing. Like, uh, like I didn't think he was coming because Ro makes this post on Facebook inviting like a hundred people, and uh, and then um, I commented with a few people that I thought of, like just that just came to the top of my head. Just random people that came to the top of my head, and I was like, "Oh yeah, you know, these are people that might be interested in doing this thing," and uh, and uh, this guy Doug was one of them, so he showed up too, which was cool. So, um, I I know I said I'm getting into karaoke or into karaoke. I just covered karaoke, but I want to because I know that's going to be huge conspiracies. I I want to get into that, uh, but I got a couple other things. I watched this movie the other day called The Next Three Days. Uh, it's with Russell Crowe, and it came out fucking years ago, right? So it came out forever ago. Um, it's a semi, mildly entertaining, interesting slash thriller type of movie. There were a couple moments in the movie where I was like, edge of my seat, like, holy shit, are they going to get caught type of thing. I'm sure most of you have seen it because, like I said, it came out years ago, and I know my fan base. I know who you people are. Um I know the types of movies you watch. It was okay, but I do think that it would have been a better movie with Gerard Butler. And that has absolutely nothing to do with my love of Gerard Butler. It just, like, watching that movie, like, I don't know, go back and watch it. If you've seen The Next Three Days, or if you haven't, go watch it and tell me that Gerard Butler wouldn't have been a better fit. Like, Russell Crowe is great. I'm not diminishing his acting ability at all. He is awesome. I will watch almost as many movies with him as I would Gerard Butler, but but Gerard Butler would have been a better fit in that movie. I don't know why they cast Russell Crowe. Maybe because, I don't know, maybe he's a bigger, more high-dollar actor than Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler seems to come out with some kind of like, I don't know, I don't want to call them shitty action movies because I love all of them, but um, but he is kind of like a popcorn movie type of guy, so... But while watching that movie, I did, you know, Wikipedia, Gerard Butler, to find out if he's been in anything recently. And not only does he have a cool movie coming out, I think this year, some sort of like, uh, you know, it's kind of like Precinct 13, I think, is the movie I'm thinking of, Precinct 13, where it's like a police department that's under fire from outside people. Um, He has something similar to that. No, I want to say it's it's called something. It's like cop something. Cop. It's all one word. Cop something. That's his next movie coming out. But so much better is that next year he has a movie coming out called Night Has Fallen, and Night Has Fallen is going to be the fourth installment in the Has Fallen series. So Olympus has fallen, London has fallen, uh, Angel has fallen, and now Night has fallen. So. No trailer for that yet, but um, but uh, at least it's in the works, and uh, that's exciting to me. So, and uh, the last thing before I get into cr- conspiracies, the last thing is uh, I am down. Um, well, I put down I pu- I put them down twenty pounds, uh, but I I I put this with like an expectation of where I'm at. You know, I put I wrote that down like a week ago, um. I'm down I'm I'm down at least 16 pounds as of last Wednesday. So so there's that. Uh I'm down 16 pounds as of last Wednesday from from working out and kind of adjusting my my uh my diet if you will. Um you know, no more coffee in the morning. You know, my coffees that I was getting were like 550 calories each. So you know, when you think about calorie intake, like like ideally for me is somewhere between eighteen hundred and two thousand calories a day, and if I if I run in the morning and I burn three hundred calories, then I start off with negative three hundred. So now in theory I can take on, you know, anywhere from twenty one hundred to twenty four hundred calories, or you know, um, you know, but but uh, but that that fucking coffee was five hundred fifty calories. Like that's just immediately. 550 calories. And uh, so I've done the whole calorie counting before and it, it can be a mess. And um, and uh, Danny Ma- Ma- Malkin is saying hi to Donnie on, on the, on the, uh, on the comments. What's up, Danny? Um, 
So this, so so you know, calorie counting can be fucking. It can just be a nightmare, um, especially now. Like I don't know why. I don't know how I did it four years ago, five years ago, whenever I, the last time I did it was. But now it's just uh, I downloaded the stupid app. That's what I thought. That's what I thought, Danny from Port City. That's what I thought, buddy. I saw that Tundra still sitting in the fucking parking lot when I drove by tonight with the stickers on it and everything. Uh, Danny is the one that uh, that I mentioned last week on the episode last week about um, about uh, um, you know calling out my socks and then being excited to hear that I had a podcast. And uh, yeah, shouts out to uh, to Dan and all of the uh, all the guys at. Um, at Port City Nissan, all the guys and gals at Port City Nissan. Um, Joanne says she she adjusted to black coffee. I I you know when I drink hot coffee, uh, I drink black coffee. Black coffee is good when it's hot. Uh, iced coffee not not as good. It's awful actually. Uh, and even that cold brew bullshit that's awful. It's terrible stuff. Uh, Greg says, what kind of coffee is 500 plus calories? Uh, the good kind, uh, when it's iced anyways, um, I get a, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Greg, here's the thing. This is what I was doing. This is where my mistake was. I would drive up to Aroma Joe's and I would order a 32 ounce iced caramel with cream and sugar. Um, I have learned since then that if I order it with uh, with just caramel and two creams, it tastes about the same. Um, so my mistake was definitely ordering it with cream and sugar, uh, and and uh, yeah, the caramel probably adds a bunch of calories too. But whatever, I think that black coffee is like zero calories. So, um, and uh, yeah, so so today, yeah, Danny says he sold that Tundra, which is too bad. Um, keep me in mind though. I'm a Toyota guy. I know you're a Nissan dealership, but you get every fucking brand in your fucking on your lot. Uh, I've seen like nine Mustangs this year on that on that lot, and like another nine Corvettes. So you get another Tundra, and keep me in mind. Um, because <laughs> here's the thing: I dr- I drive into the, so I drive into the parking lot. I rarely get out of my truck. I've learned my lesson with car dealerships. This is what happens as a mailman. All right, this can be something that I can bring up on We Deliver. But as a mailman, every dealership, every dealership that I've ever driven into, if you stop the mail truck and get out and, and peek into a vehicle, then for sure within anywhere from one hour to ninety six hours, someone at that dealership is going to be like, "So you're looking for something?" Um, and I and unfortunately on my route, I deliver to like five different fucking dealerships. So. I, I, you know, I, I got out today and actually today I didn't even get a chance to go look at something today. I got a chance. I got out of my truck and I saw this thing sitting there and it must've just shown up on the lot. It's a 2015 Toyota Tundra, which I love Tundras. And this one was the one that I really like where it's like the extended cab. I like the extended cab Tundra. I don't, you know, the four door Tundra is nice, but almost all of them have, uh, like a five foot bed, which is not enough bed for me. Because I gotta fit, I gotta fit Ruby in there. I gotta fit the snowmobile in the back of this thing, right? And it's and it's not, it's not a short snowmobile. The fucking snowmobile overall length is eleven feet. So, you know, I I can't have that five foot bed bullshit. I mean, who the fuck wants a truck, a pickup truck with a five foot bed? It's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I pull up and I and I park my mail truck and I happen to see this Tundra there and I and I walked in and then I saw Dan real quick and I was like, hey, what's the deal with this uh, this Tundra out there? And he was like, ah, it's already sold. I was like, fuck, god damn it. So it sounds like it was probably way outside my price range anyways. What uh what I might have been looking for for payment um on on a truck like that. Uh which is too bad. But hey, I'm I'm only a few years from from being able to afford something like that. Someone fucking posted a picture the other day of uh, a Chevy pickup truck. It was like a brand new pickup truck, and I think with ten percent down the payment on it was nine hundred and fourteen dollars a month. Like, who the fuck can afford that? And if you can afford that, what do you need a truck for? Why are you? Why don't you just pay someone to pull your shit? You know? Because if you can afford that, then you can probably afford something to pay for someone to pull your shit around. I don't know. That's just my thoughts real quick on that. But, yeah, anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, I'm down a bunch of fucking weight. 
and uh, someone the other day at, at Port, Port City Nissan actually um, said uh, said that he saw me at the gym and he was going to say hi, but um, it looked like I was in the zone, which is something I've never been accused of in my life. Uh, so that was kind of nice to hear. Like, hey, yeah, I am. I'm crushing it at the gym every fucking morning, every six days a week. I'm there fucking just ripping it up as best I can. So, all right, I know why you're here. You're here for, for, for some conspiracy shit. All right, this was the very basic ass question that I, that I asked. What are your favorite conspiracy theories? And I'll, and I'll, and I'll touch on, I'll touch on my thoughts on some of these. And, uh, and give, you know, what I think my, some of my favorites are, what are my go-tos? So, uh, Stephen C. Locke always chiming in on anything. Uh, he says that, uh, that Rochelle is a real person. Uh, Hey, good call. Uh, and a lot of people got a good laugh out of that. Um, good call. You know, do, do we, do we really know if she's a real person until you actually meet her face to face in the flesh? I don't know. Uh, you know, I think she's real. I think that's one of the most important. What if she's not? What if Rochelle is an actual legitimate figment of my imagination and I went completely fucking batshit crazy a year ago and I just started being like, this is this is my mate. This is my, I just like got super drunk and never came down off of it. I was like, this is my mate right here. And, and people are like, what? the fuck do you mean there's firstly there's no one next to you and what do you mean a mate and i'm like this is my mate is she beautiful she's so beautiful i love her i'm in love and i'm actually just holding a cardboard cutout of like <laughs> i'm just i'm just holding a cardboard cutout of like zoe saldana this is my mate right here this is her i'm in love <laughs> and people are just like yeah he oh he lost his mind oh the poor guy um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's not, it's not crazy. It's not that crazy a thought. I, I think she's real. And I think that's the most important part. Um, Joanne said, uh, man did not land on the moon. Uh, just watch Capricorn one. If you don't believe me, um, there's a couple of laughs and likes on there. Uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, mostly, mostly laughs. Uh, yeah, mostly likes. Uh, so I went through a moon phase. And unfortunately, I told this to Rochelle or a cardboard cutout. I told this to one of those uh, when we first started dating um, that I did go through a moon phase of like we didn't really land on the moon. Here's what happened, right? So growing up all through my childhood, never questioned it, thought moon, moon people, the people that thought we didn't really land on the moon, I thought those people were absolutely crazy. I was like, why are these people even allowed to talk? Um... And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and here's what happened in like 2014 or 15, I went down a YouTube rabbit hole of, of one conspiracy, which then led to the moon. Um, and I just, I, I, I watched, I, I bet I watched 15 different YouTube uh, documentaries, which Jason says I'm very kind to call them documentaries. I think it is very kind to call those documentaries. It's just some dork in his basement, and I know I'm throwing a rock in a glass house right now. Um, some dork in a basement talking about, you know, you know, making these videos with a voiceover thing. I don't know what his end goal is, but um, I watched a bunch of these types of videos, and I was like, I was like, holy shit, we didn't go to the moon. We never landed on the moon. Like, there's all these all these things about, like, there's a radiation belt and we could never travel through it and all this shit. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I went through a period of being like, we didn't really go through go to the moon. And then I came out of it and I was like, oh, wait, no, that was all bullshit. Like, so so my, my, my where I say, like, oh, that kind of led to a problem was that I told Ro all of that. And, and what I said was I refuse to watch any sort of flat earth conspiracy video because watching flat earth conspiracy videos, um, I, I, I'm afraid that I'll be too easily manipulated into believing that, that the earth is flat. So I can't watch them for that reason. And her takeaway from that seemed to be that I believe the earth is flat, which I don't, I don't believe that at all. Um, not for one second. It doesn't make any sense. There's some crazy ones that go with that. Like, 
like the moon and the stars are a projection and they're not real and just I, I it doesn't make any goddamn sense. If you believe in the flat earth conspiracy, then really what you're saying is that you believe you just live in the Truman show. Like that's what that's what I think you're really thinking. And and free thought is not something that is real. Um that's my thoughts on on uh that's my my not uh that's my not not very well educated guess on what uh what um fuck what the fuck was I saying uh that's my not very well informed guess on on flat earth people um that they probably think they live in the Truman show and uh those people i mean Flat Earth people definitely believe in lizard Illuminati, for sure. Uh, moving on, Harry says, uh, Newtown slash false flag. Um, again, another one that I went through a brief... I think that the Newtown false flag thing, I think that that's more of a... similar to 9-11. I think that there's, like, a lot of misinformation there. I, I don't... I You know, I believe it happened. I believe all those kids died. I believe that's awful, of course. Um, I believe that, you know, I no one hates a mass shooter more than a pro-gun person. Like, there's no person who is a member of um, of Moms Demand Attention uh, that, that, that hates a mass shooting as much as a pro-gun person. Because every time a mass shooting happens... I roll my eyes and I go, here we go again. You know, it's, it's not, it's not, you know, the, 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 the gun didn't shoot itself. You know, someone's controlling that. So, you know, that's my theories on, on Newtown slash false flag. I, I think that there's some information that wasn't really handed out correctly. Uh, I do believe in the, I don't know if I believe, but I'm definitely suspicious of, um, that coming down right away that it was someone using an AR-15 when there's all these reports that it was actually just, the guy actually just had Glocks. So I don't know about that one. We'll see. Well, we probably won't ever see, to be honest. Uh, John says uh, that UFOs are not real. Um, yeah, I believe the government definitely knows more about UFOs than what they would ever fucking tell us. Uh, for whatever crazy ass reason in December, we got that stimulus, you know, that $600 paycheck. Um, and for whatever crazy ass reason included in that was that the Pentagon had to release any information they had about UFOs within 180 days. Uh, I don't know why that was a thing. I don't know why that was involved in a co in a COVID a stimulus package, but it was, um, so, uh, but I don't believe, you know, when their 180 days was up, cause they waited all the way until almost the last minute to do that. when, when they could have just been like, here you go, here's everything we have, uh, for them to be like, you know, we're going to wait until the last minute on this and hope everyone forgets. Um, I don't know why I, I, you know, like, I don't think that they, they actually released everything that they actually know. They were just like, yep, there's some things going on that we don't know either and it's probably just russia and they've developed a fucking aircraft that can zap from one place to another like um joe rogan had an interview with a colonel with an air force colonel uh, a couple of years ago now and it's incredible to listen to he's like look we we saw this object we followed it it went from sixty thousand feet to one foot in one second, which is not something we're capable at capable of at all, it then you know disappeared from our radar, and all of a sudden it was back at its starting point. So there's some, and it was using um, uh, signal jamming technology. So there's some weird shit going on with that one. Like, what the fuck was that? What I, I want to know. I want to know that. Like, what the fuck was that thing? I don't care if the Pentagon knows right now or not, but if it's ever figured out, like I want, I definitely want to know the answer to that one. Like why, like, how's that a real thing? This thing's using signal jamming technology. It can go from one spot to another in less than a second. And, and these spots are, are miles upon miles away. 
you know, 60,000 feet is like, is like, that's like 11 miles. That's like 10 or 11 miles above sea level. And then it, you know, goes to one foot as above sea level. And then it all of a sudden is back 25 or 50 miles away. So shit like that. Um, I'd like to know more about, uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Jen says, uh, reptilian humanoids. Um, never really got into any of that. Uh, myself personally, I, I, if you have great, but, um, I don't believe that at all. I, I, I find that one, you know, there was a show a long time ago called V. Um, it was a show on like CBS or something like that. ABC, one of those fucking stupid networks. But it was called V, and basically it was aliens arrive on Earth and they are reptilian. Um, Jen also says Bigfoot, uh, specifically my favorite Bigfoot species, skunk ape. So obviously everyone's heard of, of Bigfoot. I've never heard of, uh, of skunk ape. But, um, but Bigfoot is an interesting one. Me and Jason talked about that uh, when we did a show on his show, uh, Shit Happens When You Party Naked. Which you can find on Patreon, Team Almy, um, Team Almy on Patreon. Um, we talked about Bigfoot a little bit. We touched on it a little bit. Um, I uh, I think that Bigfoot. I think that video is real. I think that that is a real thing, and I think that that was just some sort of weird dimensional time shift thing where, you know, for whatever reason, this thing. You know, we'll call it Bigfoot, I guess. This Bigfoot walks, it's just walking along in whatever dimension they currently live in, just walking along, and all of a sudden a rift in time opens up, and they accidentally stumble into the woods, and they're not paying much attention to these people with their camera over by the rocks because they're like, yeah, whatever. This this Bigfoot is just like, yeah, I don't, I don't have time to deal with you right now. Um, how far am I, am I into this right now? Uh, 41 minutes. Okay, before I go any further, advertising, 4HM Clothing, MileHighAngel.com, uh, 4HMClothing.com, MileHighAngel.com, AdamEve.com, and Manscaped.com. You can use offer code ADULTING at any one of those sites and uh, and get a discount. There's varying discounts, and I'm not going through all of it. I don't care. I'm, I'm having too much fun talking about conspiracies. Uh, Epstein and McAfee not killing themselves for sure. That is like just a major one. Epstein all, but definitely, uh, let's see, hold on. Also one that if proven correct would take down a whole lot of people in doing so probably get other to Hillary themselves, Hillary themselves being, um, if you're not familiar with the vernacular there, Hillary themselves being, you know, kill themselves because Hillary has people killed, uh, Epstein for sure. And, And McAfee too, really like. I posted a couple weeks ago when Ep- uh, when McAfee killed himself what just a few weeks ago. So right now we're in July of, of 2021. I think he killed himself in June. And in October of 2020, he posted something say- he posted something on Twitter saying like I am not suicidal. I am not going to kill myself. I have absolutely no desire to do that. I am going to see this thing through. And then, you know, but it's months later. If it had been 2 weeks later, then there's some serious questions to have there months later and maybe the lawyers are telling him like hey you should take a deal or hey you're definitely going down for this or whatever you know uh both of them though i just don't think killed themselves mcafee has a little bit more of a stronger argument of maybe he killed himself because he's in a fucking third world country prison or whatever but epstein being in a new york prison under guard after he already attempted suicide once and then he kills himself like epstein definitely did not kill. everyone fucking knows it it's one of the most crazy fucking stories in the last 20 something years maybe even more than that because it's like they killed him in front of everyone they lit- they they killed him in front of everyone's eyes and whoever it was i don't know for sure you know I don't jump right onto the Hillary bandwagon of of Hillary did it um, or had it done. Uh, I don't jump right onto that bandwagon, but I think that you know someone in his in his Rolodex uh, had some connections and was able to get him transferred to a location within the prison where that person was able to pay off someone else or even threaten someone else. Like, hey, here's a picture of your family. We need this person dead. Um, 
you know, so he's, you know, that's that it's it's a crazy story because it's like you killed him in front of everyone. I mean, there's a there's a great um so so a podcast I listen to called uh The Minds of Madness has an episode about this town. It's called the the episode is called The Town That Got Away with Murder. And uh in this town uh, basically had, like, a bully living in the town who was, like, raping their daughters. I'm not even exaggerating. He was, like, definitely raping their daughters. And every time that he beat the shit out of a woman, he would then marry her so that she couldn't testify against him. Shit like that. And eventually, one day, a couple of people just put some rounds into him, you know, sent some rockets his way. And, uh, and, he, uh, and, and, and he died. And uh, when the police showed up and they were like, hey, what happened here? The whole town, because there was like 60 witnesses. Um, the whole town was like, don't know. I didn't see anything. And there have been private investigators who've gone to the town. There's two things. Either private investigators have gone to the town to be like, hey, what happened? And they have been run off. Or these private investigators have gone to the town. And then these private investigators are like, hmm, yeah. We don't, I don't know anything either. As it turns out, I couldn't learn anything either. So, um, Ed Barton said, uh, Alex Jones himself as a conspiracy theory. I, way back before Alex Jones was kicked off the internet, um, he, uh, I, I listened to a couple episodes of his podcast. The one that sticks out the most in my head was he did like a full, and I mean, his episodes were long. They were like three or four hours long. And I listened to an entire episode about like how the government uh, pushes women to have abortions. And I was like, I cannot believe anyone listens to this guy. Like he is fucking wild. He is absolutely crazy. He is batshit crazy. But I've also listened to the two or three episodes of Joe Rogan that he's been on. And it is interesting how he says this crazy ass shit and, uh, and the shit turns out to be right. Um, I forget which one it was, but it had something to do with a drug raid and someone getting shot or something like that. And Joe Rogan was like, is that true? And he was like, yes, it's absolutely true. Just look it up. And they looked it up and sure enough, it was right fucking there. So, you know, that's one of those Alex Jones ones that's like, eh, you know, he says some crazy shit, but, you know, sometimes he's right. Um, moving on to the Facebook group that I talked about, uh, COVID-19. And I replied to this one so, because, you know, what are your favorite conspiracy theories? Uh, someone comments and says COVID-19. I said, actually, that was a hoax, not necessarily a conspiracy because that's what I believe. I think that COVID-19 was mostly a hoax. Um you know, I think that it was a glorified flu. I think that Roe is probably right in that uh, it's a lot like HPV, where it's like this was something that was dormant inside of people, and and something made it come out. Something made it like more obvious. So, um, yeah, COVID nineteen, I, I just think was absolutely, uh, you know, I mean that's that's a whole episode by itself of just craziness, like. And control. I mean, COVID nineteen seemed almost immediately to be more like, how do we control a population? Let's see, let's see if a virus will do it. You know, terrorism hasn't done it so far. Let's let's see if a virus will do it. Uh, September eleventh. Um, Sky Leo said September eleventh. Um, September eleventh was the conspiracy videos that I was watching that led me to the moon, um, figuratively. Um, which September 11th, like, again, much like um, Newtown, I think that September 11th, like, the government knew a lot more than what they tell us. I think that, I don't know that they necessarily were like, no, let this happen. I think that they knew that it was going to go down, or maybe not knew that it was going to go down. They, they had all the information at their hands to tell them this is really going to happen. And rather than do anything, they were just like, yeah, no one's actually going to do that. Which, before September 11th, did anyone think that anyone would actually do that? I mean, the going policy before September 11th was, if someone hijacks your fucking airplane, just do what they say, 
and eventually you'll land safely. Um, building seven, one hundred percent was taken down. Uh, you know that was not that building didn't just randomly collapse because the buildings next to it happened to collapse. That building was absolutely one hundred percent demolished. You know, it it was demoed for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. If you watch that video of Building Seven falling, there's no way that 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 building was was you know not intentionally taken down. Um, Anthony says uh, the government is for the people. Uh, yep, I'm with you. I I hear what you're saying. Um, I think that the uh, the government does not work necessarily for us, but more uh, more for itself. The government definitely seems to do what's going to be best for itself. Um, of course, anytime that you post a comment, uh, post anything into a Facebook group, you always get someone who is going to post their podcast, which is just like the opposite of what I'm asking here. Um, so I'm not going to read off your podcast. You can go fuck yourself. Uh, you're not going to answer my goddamn question. You can, yeah, you can fuck all the way off to the other side of the planet. Um, before I say all that, man, let me make sure, let me go through these comments and make sure he didn't actually <laughs> comment a conspiracy theory somewhere. But there are Jesus Christ, there are so many. Like, I'm going to read this without reading this person's podcast name because fuck this person. Um, I asked the question, "What are your favorite conspiracy theories?" This jackass, I'm going to call him that, comments: award-winning journalist and author, blank, redacted. Uh, discusses his various books exploring conspiracies and the importance of independent research. Former conspiracy theories that were in fact true. Former U.S. Tr President Trump's response to the coronavirus pandemic. His latest book, plus much more. Listen now at blah, blah, blah. That is not an answer to my question. In fact, I don't know if I can take the time right now to let you know. In all caps, too, to let you know I'm fucking serious. That is not an answer answer to my question and i'm going to throw in some exclamation points to really let them know i'm serious um that shit bothers the sh when it comes to podcasting like that is the worst part is that it's it's like uh there's everyone is just a snake everyone fucking eats their own like like you ask a question in a in a, in a podcasting group and these fucking people can't wait to post a comment with a link to their own show. It's just, ugh, it's gross. Like, dude, get the, ugh, figure it out, man. Like, what the fuck? I, I have plenty of other great answers here, which is awesome. Like, I have so many other great answers here. Like, the there's so far, uh, you know, just looking down this list, I see three people, so three people, three, pe four people, yep, four people who commented, with links to their own show. Didn't offer anything to the question. Fucking neurodecelerated dumbasses. Um, let's see here. Paul McCartney. Uh, I don't know a lot about that one. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, isn't that one, the one where they're like, Paul is dead? Like, um, it's some sort of Beatles album. Like, the cover says Paul is dead. And then he died, and then they like replaced him with a look-alike type of thing. Um, I don't know enough about that one to really weigh in on it. Um, this person uh, does not link his show, but talks about his own podcast, which is fine. He doesn't name his podcast, so uh, he says the Anunnaki invasion. I dedicate my podcast to the psychological mechanism of conspiracy theory ideologies. Um, I don't know enough about the Anunnaki invasion either. I know that it has... I only know a little bit about it because of Ancient Aliens. Um, was Sting a member of the NWO? Uh, Jason from Shit Happens says, uh, Y'all are my people. Um, calm down, Jason. I'm doing this fucking episode specifically to get on your podcast. Um... Dominic says the overlap between MK Ultra LSD test in SF, I assume San Francisco, and Charles Manson. Uh, I go a little bit further than that. Isn't um, wasn't Ted Kaczynski part of MK Ultra also, uh, or maybe he was just an LSD test applicant? 
Um, but yeah, I, it is crazy how the CIA had absolutely no problem testing some fucking people, giving them fucking drugs, and then uh, and then these people went absolutely batshit crazy, and uh, and 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 somehow. The, the CIA takes absolutely no credit for that. They they get they they never then you know the CIA has never been punished by any means for for uh, for Ted Kaczynski. Like this guy was a Harvard professor, and and he went batshit crazy. And the CIA is just like, yeah yeah we we dealt with him, but uh, but we're good. We don't we don't have anything else to say about him. We're, you know he's fine. Um, Let's see here. Uh, this one I thought was pretty funny. Uh, Joe Biden actually receiving 80 plus million votes. Um, so here's my theory on, I don't think there's any conspiracy there. I don't. And I know that's an unpopular opinion. I don't care, especially amongst Trump voters. Um, here's what I think it happened in 2016. In 2016, you had Hillary versus Trump. By the time October, September, October comes around, you have a Hillary versus Trump. And... I think that Trump did really good at campaigning in places where he would get the most electoral votes. And, uh, and he was such a bad candidate because he was, he was a bad candidate. I don't care who the fuck you are. Okay. He's a bad candidate. He's not, he never was a, uh, he never was a good candidate. He, I, I'm not going to go so far as to say he wasn't a good president. Uh, Cause I also, you know, I feel the same about Joe Biden, not a good president. Um, I feel the same about Obama and Bush and, and Clinton. I don't think any of them have been good presidents. I don't think, I think it's weird to put one fucking monkey in front of the other monkeys and say, this is the leader monkey. Like why, how does that person affect my life in any way, shape or form? Why does this country of 370, 75 million people have one person who's leading them, who's supposed to speak for all of us? Like that shit made sense. 250 years ago, that made sense, you know, whatever it was, 250, 300 years ago, I don't fucking know. Do I look like an educated guy? I'm not. But that that made sense that long ago to be like, this is our person who is going, it's like, it's like right now, being in New Hampshire, okay? A few million people here in New Hampshire, three or four million people here in New Hampshire, and we have a governor. Like, to elect a governor and be like, this is the person that we want to speak for us, to the world, all right? But when you have one person leading a country of 370 million people, there's no fucking possible way that this one person can speak for the entire country. He can speak for his base. He can speak for, you know, the people that agree with him. But you have half the country that does not agree with you. Um, but as far as Joe, Joe Biden receiving 80 million votes and, and, and 2016. So here's my theory on that, right? So, so Trump... In 2016, he campaigns in the right places to get the right electoral votes, right? And by the time October comes around and you have Hillary versus Trump, I think that you had a bunch of Republicans who were like, I am getting out and voting for that guy. And then you had a bunch of Democrats who were like, there's no way he can win. I'm not going to bother going to the polls tonight. And what happens is that Trump ends up getting all these electoral votes and nobody, it seems to me that nobody really understood the electoral college until 2016 and how it worked. And, uh, and so, you know, you know, on November fucking 12th or whatever, when, when Trump is declared winner, everyone's confused. How did that happen? Um, I think that, you know, then in, when you fast forward four years to 2020, the opposite happened was you have Trump versus Biden and all, you know, not all, obviously not all, but a lot of the Republicans were like, well, there's no way that Trump is going, Trump is, you know, especially because we were so, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to use the word brainwashed, but it's the word I'm going to use. We we're just a uh, conditioned is probably a better word. Let's say conditioned. We were just so conditioned to thinking Trump is doing good or not we because i'm not i don't identify as either one i'm not I, I identified libertarian leave me alone i'll leave you alone we'll get along just fine um and also you know put put 
Put me in a room with fucking anyone in this goddamn country. I am 100% positive. If you put me into a room with anyone in this country for 10 minutes, I can get along with fucking anyone. There's no one that I'm not going to get put into a room with that I can't be like, I don't see your side on anything. There's a lot of people, probably at least half the country, who I could get in a room with on guns and be like, there's no way you're going to convince me and there's no way I'm going to convince you. But what do you think about Marvel movies? What do you think about Gerard Butler? What do you think about Toyota trucks? Like that type of shit. Like for one, without a doubt, you're going to find common ground with fucking anyone. There's, I don't know how anyone can be like, I could never get along with that person. It's impossible. So anyways, um, so anyways, you, you, you get, you get, in 2020, you get, you know, Republican voters who are like, you got Trump, who I'm conditioned to believe is the best fucking candidate in history and he's pro America and I love him. And also he's going against this guy who, um, well, he has some issues. He's got some shit going on upstairs. Uh, or maybe he has, a, you know, maybe he's lacking in some shit going on upstairs. But either way, he's got some issues. And there's no way he can win. These, you know, Trump voters were like, there's no way he can win. So I'm not going to go to the vo- go to the go to vote. Uh, I can tell you that I voted in November 2020. And me and Rose st- stood in line outside of the polls f- in Fremont fucking New Hampshire at 630 at night. We stood outside for 20 minutes or more, which is something I have never seen. And uh, so to say he had 80 plus million votes, it doesn't surpri- it doesn't surprise me. It does not surprise me one bit to know that that many people turned out. Because if you take the Trump voters who were like, I don't need to go vote against this guy. And then you take the, the Biden voters who were like, I understand now. My vote genuinely does count. My vote actually does count. I was kind of with you, like, why does my vote count? I was kind of understanding, like, uh, you know, does my vote really count? It doesn't really count, you know. But when you look at 2016 and 2020, I think that we learned in the last five years that your vote genuinely does count. It really does. Um, now, there's obviously some election tampering. In Georgia, I know that the last I saw, there was like 10 people who were recorded dead before 2020 who voted, which is concerning. Certainly, 100%, that is concerning. A dead voter voting is very concerning. But 10 dead voters voting is not 17 million or whatever Trump would have needed to get over that hump. So that's my theories on, uh, that's my that's my thoughts anyways. I don't know if it's necessarily my theories, but certainly my thoughts on the whole, you know, stolen election bullshit. I still think that, you know, anytime I see someone say that, the election was stolen. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. So, um, yep, there's another one. Let's do a podcast. We can talk about any of your favorites. Let's not. Um, that's not an answer. Uh, another link. Uh, drunk. I'm not going to name this one. But another link to someone else's podcast. Without an answer to my fucking question. Um, let's see here. Uh, this guy, Nicholas, says, I like to listen to people debunking them. But so far, flat Earth, hollow Earth, space is fake. The moon landing is a hoax. Take your pick. These are some of the dumbest ones I've heard. Yeah, flat Earth is a fucking, that's a go-to for like super dumb ones. Flat Earth is definitely a really dumb one. Hollow Earth is a really dumb one. Space is fake, I think, usually seems to fall in line with flat Earth. Um, moon landing is a very popular one um, for, you know, for, for hoaxes. Um yeah, I agree. I agree with this guy, Nicholas. Um, you know what I should have done was I should have been better as a podcast host uh, in general for the last two and a half years. Uh, but in this particular instance, I should have been better about like the people who actually answered the fucking question. I should have been like, what's the name of your show? Because I'll give you a shout out. Um, Creatures of the Night is a uh, is a Jason Almy podcast that is not a Patreon. So you can find that anywhere you want to. Um, Creatures of the Night is a, uh, is a, it's a conspiracy related show. So, um, uh, let's see here. Then America invades the Middle East for weapons of mass destruction, dot, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, that is funny. I recently watched the movie Green Zone with, uh, with Ben, uh, Ben, with Matt Damon. Um, I got my, I got my Harvard, I got my Harvard movie, Goodwill Hunting actors confused there for a second. 
Um, Matt Damon, yeah, yeah. So I recently watched Green Zone, which I actually really enjoy. Green Zone, uh, fucking military people are the worst, with the exception of me. Uh, military people are the worst when it comes to watching military movies because, like, there was this movie that came out, I don't know, 10, 10 or 12 years ago, maybe a little more than 12 years ago, called uh, The Hurt Locker. And it's Iraq 2004. And just every military person that you listen to, that you, that you talk to about this movie who served in that time frame, like 2003 to 5 type of thing, they're like, they're not wearing the right uniforms. Like, fuck you, dude. Fuck off. Like, take it's a fucking movie, okay? Just fucking watch the movie and be entertained for a minute, all right? If 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 five percent of it is true, then, and here's the other thing it, that most people don't know is that the military and Hollywood in general have a agreement that a military uniform can never be 100% accurate. So there's a Samuel L. Jackson, um, oh, what's his fucking name? John Travolta. So there's a Samuel L. Jackson, John Travolta movie called Basic. And Samuel L. Jackson plays a sergeant first class, which I know based on my demo, you probably all know, well, not all, but most of you know what military rank looks like and means. And in the movie, Samuel L. Jackson plays a sergeant first class and he's wearing specialist rank. So wrong rank for his title. And, uh, you know, I watched that movie and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay. I can pick it out. It's great. Whatever. I don't care. I don't give a fuck if a normal civilian, if someone who's never been in the military and has never been in law enforcement and has no idea what rank is, I don't give a fuck if they watch that movie and, and they don't, and, 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 and they don't catch that. Who gives a shit? But what I was getting at was that um, the military and Hollywood have a general understanding of no no cinematic portrayal of a of a uniform can ever be one hundred percent accurate. So any military movie or show or whatever that you watch is never going to be one hundred percent accurate. They all have some sort of flaw intentionally by design. So, yeah, this movie, The Hurt Locker, like, people made a big deal about, oh, he's, fucking, oh, he's not wearing the right, we weren't wearing those uniforms, we were wearing the other desert camo. Shut the fuck up, all right? Grow the fuck up and watch the fucking movie, okay? <sighs> yes, but, anyways, America invades Middle East for weapons of mass destruction. Yes, we did definitely go to Iraq under the guise of looking for mass weapons of mass destruction. And there were none there, and it certainly seems like there was not evidence of them being there at all like and what would they have done with them anyways i mean they they would have blown themselves up at, at worst or maybe at best i don't know you know pick pick your adjective um i don't have a problem with people from the middle east I'm just saying um but yeah that you know they 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 uh you know what's the worst that would have happened they had no way to launch them across the fucking planet so, uh, let's see here. Uh, Carleen says uh, the UFOs are coming, or better yet, the government is out to get us. Uh, UFOs? I wouldn't be surprised if we get invaded by UFOs one day. Here's another person. Dan says uh, birds. Um, I'm going to have to look into this whole bird conspiracy thing. Um, I had, I've hit birds. I, like, is this like, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to need to look into this. Is this an all birds thing? Because I've hit birds. I had a bird lodged in my grill of my truck once. And it was dead. And it was not, there was no electronics inside of it. So, uh, Martin says, flat earth, COVID is a hoax, NWO. I, I went down a YouTube rabbit hole of, of New World Order a long time ago. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, especially if you combine NWI, NWO with the Denver airport with uh with that one look i know that dan cummins from time suck did a whole episode on the denver airport um not long ago i still look at the denver airport i've watched the videos i've i've read the things it is fucking weird like why would i get uh, so so that like part of it was like well there was already an airport in the city why move an airport out of the city to me it makes sense like you know who wants a fucking airplane? Who wants a 747 flying over their house? Uh, nobody. 
So move it further away. I get that part, but like the fucking weird ass like guys in gas masks guiding kids down a hallway and you know just there's some weird ass shit going on with that i i still believe there's you know again back to newtown and 9 11 like i believe there's there's something going on there i just don't know what it is that is the the yeah denver airport is fucking weird uh and COVID is a hoax yeah the COVID is a hoax that's exactly it uh howard says aliens are in my living room um, so for those of you that don't know here in, here in New Hampshire, we have a fairly popular, uh, UFO festival in September every year called, uh, well, it's, it has to do with, uh, incident at Exeter, which was back in the sixties. There was a guy who had a very close encounter with UFOs and there was like a kind of a UFO surge back then of people seeing these strange objects and in, in this area, right in this area. Here's the thing though. Um, this guy ran to the police department and the police went out with him, and two police officers saw it also. And uh, I remember my father telling me that um, he talked to those p- two police officers in like the 70s or 80s, and those two police officers were like, I wish we'd have never said anything, because they were, you know, all of their credibility went out the window. Everyone thought they were crazy too, which is just, uh, that in itself is crazy. Like, so if one person says something, they're crazy. If if that one person then goes and gets two more credible people to come in and check this thing out and they also see it and testify to it, they're cr- so now all three are crazy? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, it's all a simulation uh, from Gregoire. Greg, Gregoire? Gregoire. Uh, it's all a simulation. I've thought about that too often. It will drive you insane. That we are just sims, that, you know, there's just... Something up there controlling every move that we make. You know, it's great to think that we have free will. It's really nice to think that we have free will and we can just, you know, I can go outside and shoot a shoot a bullet into the tire of my truck right now. Uh, but was that just in the plan all along? You know, that's a weird thing to think about. If you spend too much time thinking about that one, you are going to fucking... It hurts. It hurts the head. Uh, birds are all drones. I'm telling you. Um, I'm telling you, Joe. Joe. Joe commented on the live feed here. Said uh, birds are all drones. I. I'm telling you, not if if there's uh, you know I could maybe buy into the fact that I could maybe buy into the conspiracy that maybe some of them are. But I'm telling you, I've seen them dead on the road. I've hit them with my truck. All right. I. I don't actually believe that Joe believes this. I could be wrong. Joe, chime in if you actually believe this. Um, Rochelle said, I love the Hurt Locker. Great flick. Um, I absolutely love the Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker was one of the reasons I re-enlisted in the military. I was out of the military. I saw the Hurt Locker, and it was sh- like maybe a week or two later, I ran into some friends at a bar who were deploying again, and they were like, hey, we're going back overseas. And I was like, I want to go too. Um, so contributing factor. Uh, I really like the Heart Locker a lot. I don't give a fuck what any of my military brethren want to say about it. Um, you know, I th- I think you're wrong. I think that the Heart Locker was a great movie. Um, that this is not the Matrix, kind of along the lines of what I just said. You know, like, you know, is it? Are we controlled by something? Is this all just a simulation? Am I just asleep in a giant bath of cum right now? I don't fucking know. Who knows? I don't know. Um, 9-11, another 9-11 one. Here's another person commenting with a link to their own podcast, which is just, that's not an answer. It's not, it's not even, it's not even remotely close to what I asked. I don't get it. I don't understand what it is with these fucking podcast tools. <sighs> Saying that myself as a podcast tool. How long have I been doing this show? An hour and 13 minutes. That's back to back weeks of super long episodes for you guys. And I enjoyed it. Last week was an hour and 40 minutes. I'm an hour and 15 minutes into it this week. Somehow I pulled it off because the internet seems to be down here, but I used my my mobile hotspot, um, and uh, and it worked. I don't know how it worked, but it did. Um, I think that's going to do it for me. And I, I had a lot of fun talking to you all about uh, conspiracies. If you want to chime in with your thoughts on conspiracies, 
um, any of the ones that I mentioned tonight or any of the ones that you think that I didn't mention tonight, anything that I might have missed. Uh, Joe says, nah, man, birds are stupid to be spying on us all. Um, they're fucking weird. All right. I've, yeah, they're, they're, they are stupid. I will tell you that when you're flying an airplane at 60 miles an hour and they're like, what's that? I want to get closer. That doesn't make any sense. I've never once thought that like, but at the same time, I think like if a UFO landed in my backyard right now, maybe I would be like, what is that? I want to get closer. I want to check this thing out. So maybe, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe they're just dumb. Uh, but yeah, if you want, if you want to chime in on any of the, uh, any of the podcast or pff, any of the conspiracies that I mentioned tonight, uh, please do. I want to know your thoughts on what I talked about tonight. I want to know what, you, you know, anything that I missed. If I missed a, a fucking conspiracy that you think is a thing, please, by all means, I want you to email adultingdonnypod at gmail.com. You can check me out on Instagram, uh, adultingdonny. Uh, on Facebook is Adulting with Donnie Podcast. Uh, you can also join the private Facebook group, um, Adulting Donnie Super Secret Club. You can join the private group, uh, you know, which is you know growing slowly, which is fine by me. Um, suicide prevention line one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. That's one eight hundred two seven three talk. You know, don't Epstein yourself. Don't don't accidentally kill yourself. Um, and Hey, if you're not a suicidal person like me, then, uh, then, then make sure that you, you know, and you're afraid that someone's going to suicide you, make sure that you make a tweet or a Facebook post or something saying I'm not suicidal. In fact, you all should go out right now, go to your fucking Facebooks or whatever you use and post. I'm not suicidal. And then tag adulting Donnie podcast. Um, that's what you should do. All right. I think that's going to do it for me tonight. I hope you all have an amazing week. Uh, I have a, I have a, I have a surprise. I'm going to give you a spoiler, a little bit of a spoiler. Next week's episode is going to be a couple days early and there's a surprise to it. So make sure you, you know, keep an eye on the Facebook page, keep an eye on your feeds. All right. Surprise. There's going to be a surprise for you next week. All right. Good night, everyone.